Bundes Bulletin Constitutional Officers Commission makes appointments. EU earmarks further $50 million for Fiji's sugar sector. And robbery suspect back in custody after turning himself in. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. The Constitutional Officers Commission has announced several appointments following a meeting in Suva today. The appointments are for the Public Service Commission and Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission. Akusita Tale reports. The new chairperson of the Public Service Commission is ANZ Bank for Fiji CEO Vishnu Mohan. The new members are above Nana Ryan, a commercial lawyer, Nasbit Hazelman, CEO Fiji Commerce and Employees Federation, businessman Daksesh Patel and Kalpesh Solanki and USB academic Dr. Akanisi Kenrayate. Five people have also been appointed to the Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission for a term of three years. High Court Judge Justice Mohammed Ajmir is the chairperson. The members are friend director Sashi Kiran, lawyer Faiz Khan, social worker Selina Liwai, and FBC program director Pedeli Rokotivuna. The commission has also approved the advertisements for vacancies of the Auditor General and the Commissioner of Fiji Correction Service, both locally and internationally. Akusita Tale, FBC News. The European Union has earmarked more than $50 million in funding support for Fiji in a new package of development assistance. Among the priority areas of support is the sugar sector, which will lose its preferential arrangements for the EU market of duty and quota free come 2017. Maggie Boyle reports. Implementing full development cooperation, the European Union's head of delegation, Pacific Ambassador Andrew Jacobs, revealing a new bilateral package. Now on the table, another, another 20 million euros, so around 50 million um, Fiji dollars for new programs, which we're currently discussing uh, with the government. Um, but those programs are really going to be targeting upgrading the competitiveness of, uh, of sugar uh, from Fiji. So in other words, making uh, production processes, harvesting processes smoother, uh, more modern in order to be able to compete in uh, more effectively. The sugar industry continues to be a priority investment. Ambassador Jacobs says the new funding assistance is expected to complement the ongoing work in the area. Since 2006 we've made available 60 million euros, so I guess that's about 140 million Fijian dollars uh, at the moment uh, for projects which are uh, going on. Uh, those projects range in from support through non-governmental organizations to help uh, sugar farmers to develop additional products, additional produce. Other areas of development aid for the EU include establishing a program to strengthen the justice system, making it more effective and accessible for Fijians. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Fiji has significantly improved in the areas of women in power and decision making, according to a progress report on the implementation of the Beijing Platform for Action in the Pacific Island countries. The report, which is a compilation of national review reports on Beijing Plus 20, also revealed Fiji has one of the highest percentages of violence against women in the Pacific. Chanel Sivan was at the launching of the report in Suva last night. There are 12 critical areas of concern in the Beijing Platform for Action covering women in poverty, education, health, violence against women, armed conflict, human rights, the media and the environment. According to the progress report, Fiji is showing signs of progress in some areas. At the outset, I would say women in the Pacific have waited for too long to see that this component in their lives, in the national agenda, needs to be addressed. Fijian women have waited for too long. How long can they wait? The report says Fiji has seen a rise in percentage of the number of women in parliament. In 2006, the percentage was 12.6, and in 2014, it grew to 14 percent. However, there has been a reduction in the number of seats in parliament from 71 in 2006 to 50 in 2014. Speaking at the launch of the report, Fiji Women's Rights Movement representative Genevieve Sukdeo said, appointment of women to higher offices does not depict the reality on the ground. And we tend to see a few incidences of women um, you know, rising to a certain position or, you know, or gaining status in a particular field and we think that that is the reality of, of most women in that country. Um, but the reality is you cannot look at a few privileged 
um, women and think that that is the norm for you know for the rest of the women. Uh, every woman comes with her own set of experiences, her own you know personal lived realities. The report also makes startling revelations. It says 64% of women in Fiji have experienced physical and sexual violence and 24% of women still are experiencing violence. These statistics need to come down in order to report Fiji has achieved something. At this stage, Fiji stands as one of the countries in the Pacific region with the highest number of violence against women. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. Robbery suspect the Tupovu Ataki Sari is back in police custody after he gave himself up at the Lautoka police station today. Futaki was wrongfully released while being questioned about robberies in the West. Ellen Stahls reports. An internal investigation has begun into the release of Tupo Vuataki from police custody in Ba on Tuesday. Uh, due to miscommunication between the two police stations, he was uh, released uh, from, uh, uh, from detention. Keep in mind at that stage he was uh, detained as a suspect uh, with the uh, limitation and I think that was a miscommunication in terms of uh, the period of his detention and uh, unfortunately uh, he was released. Puataki was wanted for a series of robberies in the West including an armed robbery at the Arrowtown Mobile Service Station in Nandi about a fortnight ago. I have appointed uh, my senior investigator from my internal affairs and he is at present in the West to investigate the whole issue. So uh, uh, without going into details, uh, we will evaluate and, and, and if there are any uh, offences uh, committed, uh, whether criminal or departmental, we will take steps against those people. Vuataki is currently in custody as investigations into the robberies continue. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. The Employment Relations Advisory Board meeting has been deferred twice over the last two weeks in order for the government to finalize its representatives. When held, the discussions are expected to address the issues of non-compliance in regard to standards of the International Labour Organization. In March, a tripartite agreement was signed between the Fiji Trade Union Congress, the Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation, and the government in the midst of allegations of breaches of ILO standards. Commerce and Employers Federation CEO Nesbitt Hayes Hazelman says the meeting is now rescheduled from the 18th to the 22nd of this month. Minister for Employment and Industrial Relations Chiochi Kondrote says he is looking forward to the commencement of talks as soon as possible to move things along. Under the tripartite agreement, the parties are expected to submit a joint report to the ILO governing body in Geneva next month that will address the freedom of association and the right to collective bargaining issues Fiji is accused of breaching. Still to come on FBC News, Defence Ministry tests its search and rescue guidelines with $40,000 two-day exercise. So what was the question again? Oh, wait, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting. Racing <laughs> because I am fast and slick, and plus I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Burumanaka, my name is Real, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 p.m. to 7, right here on Today FM. Today's hit music. <laughs> The Health Ministry is reporting a rate of about 161 new cases of cervical cancer annually. Health Minister Chone Usumate says there is a need to screen more women at, at risk sorry, of cervix cancer using affordable screening methods with the capacity to maintain good quality control. Julie Vatuwaliwali with this report. While taking delivery of the new cryotherapy screening machines, Minister Chone Usumate said the ministry has recognized the need for cervix screening to be run as a program rather than as an uncoordinated clinical activity. He says cervical cancer is a disease that can easily be prevented with cooperation from women. 
message to all of our women, if you, you should turn up for the screening and then when the facilities, when you know that these machines that uh, they are available, you turn up and you can be treated and you put a stop to it and cut it short right there and there. National Coordinator for Cervical Cancer Fiji, Carolina Tamani, says women of all age groups should have cervical cancer tests. The eligible cancer screening uh, age group is uh, from 15 years to 60. So that also includes the 30 to 50 years bracket. Okay? Because anybody that is sexually active should come for a screening. Cervical cancer is the second most highest cause of cancer deaths in the country. The ministry hopes the introduction of methods of cervical cancer screening and the addition of more human resources will underpin its commitment to have in place a national cancer screening program that will reduce the burden of cervical cancer deaths. Julie Watuwaliwali, FBC News. Non-communicable diseases will continue to be a main threat to Fiji and the Pacific unless a consorted and sustained effort is made to address this menacing issue. Minister for Health Achone Usumate made this statement while at the opening of the third pathology symposium in Suva today. Ali Kimbia has more. 82% of deaths around the country is caused by non-communicable diseases alone. This has painted a bleak picture for current and future generations of our country. However, the Ministry of Health has reaffirmed its commitment to reinvigorate its fight against NCDs. Economic effects of the NC burden, NC burden is handicapping the economic growth of many of our nations, both in terms of loss of productivity and contribution by an active economic age band, but also to the cost of the health system. Usumate has also revealed to FBC News that the Ministry of Health is embarking on a new initiative to continue to combat growing concerns of NCDs. One of the things that we are trying to organize soon is a meeting with all the religious bodies. So we can take this message and hopefully the religious bodies can then pass on the message to their people. NCDs is all about choices. What you choose to think, choose to put what kind of thoughts you put in your head, what you breathe, what you drink, what you eat whether you rest enough, whether you activate your body, so you want this message to go. With the Ministry of Health mapping out some of the preventative measures, it is also looking at screening 90,000 people for NCDs. This program is still in the planning stages. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama says entries in the National Flag Design Competition are still being collected and finalized. Speaking to FBC News, Mbani Marama says the committee members of the National Panel of Citizens are yet to be selected. Assistant Minister for Youth and Sports, Ilya Sandelana, is the chairperson of the committee. Mbani Marama says an announcement will be made once all the entries are finalized. The new flag design competition ended last Friday with a total of 1,430 flag entries received. The Lautoka High Court has ruled in favour of the 10 board members who were removed from their positions in the Rarawai and Penang Cane Producers Association. An interim injunction for 14 days has been issued by the High Court. All 10 board members can now resume their duties and the extraordinary general meeting scheduled for May 16th will be cancelled following the ruling. The problems which has plagued the association landed in court amidst ongoing internal bickering. The association has 14 board members and 10 board members were suspended. So, in, if, uh, in effect, the board was uh, not able to function with a minority of four. And um, those purportedly suspended were 10. So, in fact, the real board was made to sit out. And that uh, very unfortunately uh, brought matters to a standstill. The case will be called for mention on May 22nd when a hearing date is expected to be fixed. The Ministry of Defence has today put to test search and rescue guidelines with, sorry, guiding documents with the view to finalise the new concept of search and rescue. The concept integrates aeronautical, maritime and land search and rescue. Savaratumbo reports. <laughs> Officers from police, the fire authority, Navy and airports, Fiji Limited, pooled their resources and skills in the search and rescue drill. One of the aims of the drill is to see how well they all work together as the ministry looks at integrating search and rescue services. Commanding officer, SSP Maritin Ngilevu says the team performed very well. 
Yes, very much, uh, especially uh, for uh, officers to know what to do and uh, our response time. Eh? Okay, uh, our officers now, uh, this is the first time ever for this exercise to be carried out. Eh? And we are really uh, it, uh, thankful and it is an opportunity for our officers. Uh, we have finalized uh, the search and rescue manual and of course the uh, search and rescue bill which is currently, uh, so this exercise, we will have to uh, identify the grey areas. And we've also engaged the observers, deployed into the various uh, uh, classes, for them to identify those grey areas. The Ministry of Defence pumped $40,000 into the two-day exercise. Search and Rescue Coordinator George Washington says the Ministry will also request a special budget to conduct search and rescue training for village headmen. In the proposed mechanism, we, we intend to empower, government uh, intends to empower the Turhani Koros, given the vast, uh, the, the, the vast uh, maritime boundaries and of course the scattered islands, we will empower them to initiate response. The, the initial response has to be initiated from the Turhani Koros. But they will also undergo training, specific training on search and rescue. Fiji has over the years encountered loss of lives and missing individuals in maritime disasters. The realigning of search and rescue policies to international standards and global practices is intended to improve our responses to search and rescue in any incident, whether it be maritime, land or aeronautics. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Sports is up next. Here's Jamie with the latest. Thank you, thank you. Fact. And Ben Ryan stresses that complete focus is crucial for his side. This and more after the break. The Latoka football side was the first team to book a spot in the semi-final of the Vodafone Fiji FAC tournament. Penny Finau scored twice, while Arvindra Naidu, Ratu Chosefa Tundumudangi and Dev Raj scored a goal each for the Blues in their 5-2 win over Nandrunga at Prince Charles Park today. It has been a remarkable turnaround for Lautoka following their 3-2 loss to Bar in the opening round. The side went on to beat defending champions Nandi last night by the same scoreline. The Lambasa football side is looking... Good to make it to the semi-final as well. The team is currently playing Suva and is leading 1-0 at halftime. Here's the goal from the first half. And they come to Sony Takala on the embankment side and plays it through. A good one and Robin has got a goal. It will be a penalty. He got pulled from behind by Dave running a guy. Tayonike Rivanua. And places it. Rangata dive to the right. But Tayone Kerevanua has put the Bamba Singa lines up by one goal to near. Still with the fact, Reo defeated Tailevu Naita Siri 2-0 in the first match at Prince Charles Park this morning. Reo needed a three-goal win to secure a spot in the semi-finals but managed only two and will now have to wait for the outcome of the Suva Lambasa match. Sabanada Nakalevu and Tone Kalautani got on the score sheet for the Delta Tigers today. I came here for goals, I just scored three goals, but uh, luck was on our side, uh, we had a lot of scoring opportunities, but we didn't uh, capitalize on that. But overall, uh, win is a win, and that's off to the boys for a gallant offer today. Meanwhile, in the under-15 category of the Vodafone Fiji Fact, Ba will play Navoa in the final tomorrow. The Navoa under-15 side defeated Nandi 2-1 in the semi-finals, while Ba had to struggle to beat defending champions Rewa on penalty kicks. Fiji football has uh, identified uh, players from uh, south up to almost 20 and it's going to be another 20 selected from uh, the west and uh, these players will be uh, um, identified as our elite players, uh, they'll be selected to uh, attend training. The end of 15 final will be played at 12pm tomorrow. 
Vodafone Fiji Sevens coach Ben Ryan has stressed to his players to remain focused at all times during the Glasgow Sevens in Scotland this weekend. Ryan says all too often in the past, Fiji has been let down by the most basic of errors at the most crucial of times. And it just comes down to, I uh, tell the boys, concentrating on whistle to whistle. You know, when the referee blows the whistle, all you care about is, is what's going on until he blows the whistle again to stop the, a piece of play. And up until that point, nothing matters apart from that segment of play. If we just focus like that and we concentrate like that for two, two tournaments, then we'll be fine. The national side will have the opportunity to take the lead on the World 7 Series points table as well as qualify for the 2016 Olympic Games. Fiji will take on Wales in its opening pool match of the Glasgow 7s at 11.42pm tomorrow before playing Portugal at 2.48am on Sunday and host Scotland at 6.21am. And you can watch the Glasgow 7s live on APC TV. The Fiji Rugby Union is organizing a scrum program for local players and coaches next week. The set piece has more than often been the Achilles heel for the national side and officials are determined to tackle this issue from the grassroots level. Tsarle Ndavakadaka has more. Vodafone Flying Fijians coach John McKee can take some credit for improving Fiji's scrummaging woos since taking over the reins in 2014. Now the Kiwi mentor will be working with national forwards coach Alan Moore to educate local players and coaches about this crucial set piece. It's, it's an all comers program, so, so we're asking in terms of front rowers, all comers. So it could be anyone from you know, senior school age front rowers, club front rowers, provincial, provincial players. We, we, and we encourage their coaches to come along as well so that, that they can continue the programs within, the, within, the, within, their, within their clubs, schools and provinces. It's a challenge that FRU is working towards improving with a view to developing world-class forwards. One of the key purposes we're trying to do is to build our strength in and around our front rows and our scrum knowledge. And so therefore to do that we need to go back and start looking at having coaches that are appropriate in the islands and finding more players that are capable of reaching you know, the top end of Fiji rugby. FRU will be holding this course in Suva next Monday before moving to Singatoka and Nandi. Silent or the Kavak, FBC Sports. And that's it from Sports Tonight and from me for the week. I'll be back again on Monday. Until then, you have yourselves a safe weekend. Good evening. The 2015 Fijian Tourism Expo will focus on the theme of tourism in the community, placing emphasis on the importance of the tourism industry to Fiji's economy and the numerous positive impacts the industry has on the lives of the local community. Tourism Fiji's Director of Events, Sally Cooper, reveals 500 people are confirmed to participate in the three-day event. A record 292 Fijian tourism products and service providers Providers, sorry, have registered for the expo and 125 booths have been booked. 169 international buyers and media are confirmed to attend the event brought in by the platinum sponsor, Fiji Airways. Fine weather apart from brief showers was experienced over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. An active trough of low pressure lies over Vanuatu. Meanwhile, another trough lies over Samoa and extends southeastwards to the north of southern Cooks. Meanwhile, a broad easterly trades affects most of the southwest Pacific countries. The Sugar City recorded the highest temperature for the day, hitting 33 degrees. The capital city recorded the lowest at 28 degrees. Fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers and thunderstorms can be expected tomorrow. And further outlooks, some showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. And recapping our top stories. Constitutional Officers Commission makes appointments for Public Service Commission and Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission. European Union earmarks more than $15 million in funding support for Fiji's new package of development assistance for the sugar sector. And Beijing Platform for Action report reveals Fiji's improvement in areas of women in power and decision making as well as being one of the country with highest percentage of violence against women in the Pacific. Now to our poll question for this week, we're asking, do we have an accurate picture of the crime rate? Visit our FBC website to take part.
Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That's all from us tonight. Be sure to join Akusita Tale from tomorrow with our weekend bulletin. I'll be back again on Monday. Till then, you have yourselves a safe and enjoyable weekend. Nimo the Mamba.